The History of North America podcast is a sweeping historical saga of the United States, Canada, and Mexico from their deep origins to our present epoch. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this exciting, fascinating, epic journey through time, focusing on the compelling, wonderful, and tragic stories of North America's inhabitants, heroes, villains, leaders, environment, and geography. This incredible historical adventure follows a path of exciting events led by interesting people who reach beyond their grasp to touch key moments in time. The History of North America podcast series is an educational and entertaining look at the thrilling chronicle of North America, an action-packed tale of a continent that is still unfolding. I invite you to come along for the ride. Welcome to Season 13 of the 5-Minute Biographies Podcast. Here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi guys, welcome to the 5-Minute Biographies Podcast. Before we get started, I'd just like to point out that other than introducing you to Mark Vinette's History of North America podcast, we don't carry any advertising. And so if you'd like to support the show, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash YouTube. Or if you'd like to support it in a more direct way by, say, buying me a coffee, please check out 5minutebiographies.com forward slash coffee to see how. Also, don't forget to take a look at our sister show, 5 Minute History, at 5minutehistory.com. And if you'd prefer to hear the podcast in Spanish, please check out 5minutebiographies.com forward slash Spanish. OK, let's get on with the show and episode 2 of season 13, Oscar Wilde. Oscar Fingal O'Flaherty Wills Wilde was born on the 16th of October 1854 in Dublin, Ireland, to parents Sir William Wilde, Ireland's leading otto-ophthalmologist, that is, a specialist in ear and eye conditions, and his wife Jane, who was a lifelong Irish nationalist and poet. Oscar was the second of three children, having a brother who was two years older than he, called William, and a younger sister called Isola, who was born in 1857. For the first nine years of his life, Oscar was educated at home and was even able to learn French from his nursemaid and German from his governess. But in 1865, he joined his brother at Petora Royal School in Enniskillen, where he studied until 1871. Whilst there, he impressed his peers with his ability to speed read and excelled in the classics, winning multiple prizes for translating Latin and Greek texts. Ultimately, he was one of only three students to receive a Royal School scholarship to Trinity College. Unfortunately, though, during his time at Petora, Oscar's sister died at the age of only nine, after contracting meningitis. He shared rooms with his brother whilst he studied classics at Trinity College in Dublin for the next three years, with a particular interest in Greek literature, after being inspired by his tutor professor Mahaffey. Whilst there, Wilde also became an active member of the University Philosophical Society, where members discussed artistic and intellectual subjects. He was an outstanding student and was first in his class in Year 1, winning the Berkeley Gold Medal in Greek in his finals. He also competed for and won a half-scholarship to Magdalen College, Oxford, where he continued his classical studies between 1874 and 1878. Whilst at Magdalen, Wilde became interested in Freemasonry, being attracted by the secrecy and rituals involved. By his third year, he had risen to the rank Master Mason, although his interest only lasted while he was at Oxford. He also became involved in the aesthetic and decadent movements during his Oxford years, wearing his hair long and decorating his room with peacock feathers, lilies and sunflowers. In November 1878, Wilde graduated from Oxford with a double first in his BA in the Classics. While spending time in London in 1881, Wilde was introduced to Constance Lloyd, the daughter of a wealthy Queen's Council, and the pair became reacquainted when she happened to be visiting Dublin in 1884, where Wilde was lecturing. 
He proposed and the couple were married at St James's Church in Paddington, London on the 29th of May 1884. They went on to have two sons, Cyril in 1885 and Vivian in 1886. But after Vivian's birth, the marriage started to fall apart after Wilde discovered homosexual sex, having been seduced by a young man called Robert Ross. Wilde had been regularly producing fairy tales for magazines and published The Happy Prince and Other Tales in 1888, following this with two more collections, Lord Arthur Savile's Crime and Other Stories and A House of Pomegranates, which was dedicated to Constance in 1891. One of the stories, published in the July 1890 edition of Lippincott's monthly magazine, became one of his most famous titles. The picture of Dorian Gray tells the story of a man who makes a deal with the devil so that only the image of his portrait gets old while he, in real life, retains his youthful beauty. At the time, though, the story was criticised for its obvious decadence and homosexual allusions, with the Daily Chronicle going as far as to call it unclean and poisonous. Although Wilde defended the story, he nevertheless revised it before it was published in book form in 1891. During this time, Wilde was introduced to Lord Alfred Douglas, the son of the Marquis of Queensbury, and the two began an intimate relationship, with Wilde becoming infatuated, indulging Douglas's every whim. Fame and fortune started to come Wilde's way following the publication of three comedies, Lady Windermere's Fan, An Ideal Husband, and The Importance of Being Earnest. The latter is considered Wilde's masterpiece and is his final play. It was written rapidly in 1894 and was first performed at the St James's Theatre in London on the 14th of February 1895. Four days later, the Marquis of Queensbury accused Wilde of being a sodomite. Wilde sued for libel against the advice of his friends, but the trial opened at the Old Bailey on the 3rd of April 1895. To avoid up to two years in prison, it was incumbent upon the defence to prove that the alleged libellous statement was actually true, and so the Marquis of Queensbury hired a team of detectives to find evidence of Wilde's homosexuality. The evidence they gathered was presented in court, and subsequently salacious details of the private lives of Oscar Wilde and Lord Alfred Douglas were published by the press. Acting on advice from his lawyers, Wilde dropped the case and the Marquis of Queensbury was found not guilty of libel. Unfortunately, this also meant that Wilde was liable for all court costs, which left him bankrupt. On the 6th of April 1895, Wilde was arrested on gross indecency charges. Court proceedings began on the 26th of April and although the jury was unable to reach a verdict, at another trial which took place the following month, Wilde was found guilty and was sentenced to two years hard labour, the maximum allowed. Wilde served time first in Newgate Prison, followed by Pentonville and Wandsworth. The hard labour part of his time served contributed significantly to a decline in health, spending two months in the infirmary at one point due to a fall, during which he suffered a ruptured eardrum. On the 23rd of November 1895 he was transferred to Reading Jail, where he served the remainder of his sentence. He was released from prison on the 19th of May 1897 and sailed to Dieppe in France on the same day, never returning to the UK. During his last three years, Wilde was impoverished and although she refused to meet him or allow him to see his sons, Constance sent him money, amounting to around £3 per week. He did spend some time with Robert Ross during 1897 and was even reunited with Lord Douglas later the same year, before the pair were split apart by their families. What little money Oscar Wilde had, he spent on alcohol and he wandered the boulevards of Paris alone. On the 12th of October 1900 he sent a telegram to Robert Ross which read, Terribly weak, please come. Ross arrived on the 25th of November, by which time Wilde had contracted meningitis. Ross sent for a priest and Oscar Wilde was baptised into the Catholic Church. He died on the 30th of November 1900 at the age of only 46. 
On the 14th of February 1995, Wilde was commemorated with a stained glass window at Poet's Corner in Westminster Abbey, and in 2017 he was one of approximately 50,000 men who received a posthumous pardon for convictions related to homosexual acts, which, under the Policing and Crime Act 2017, were no longer considered offences. I hope you enjoyed that episode of 5 Minute Biographies. If you would like to see some pictures to go with the words, please check out the YouTube channel at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash YouTube. You can also support the show simply by leaving a review wherever you get your podcasts. But if you would like to support the show more directly by, say, buying me a coffee, please take a look at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash coffee to see how. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast at www.5minutebiographies.com.